All right. Welcome back. Hope you have had a nice break. Are there any questions? Okay, before the break, uh, we explained double exponential smoothing. We also explained a winter's additive method. Now we are going to implement some forecasting method using Excel. So starting with the moving average. Uh, this data, you need a computer sales data. Uh, I'll try to computers. I hope it's still in week four <coughs> data or chapter four. So use chapter four Excel data. Um, go to tablet computer cells. The data is week of uh, chapter four. Chapter four Excel data. Okay, you ready? Shall we start? Right. Okay, it is this data here. Okay. So we want to using three period moving average. I will do two method. One, formula in Excel. Two, I will do data analysis using Excel data analysis function. Okay. So first, I'm going to do a three period moving average. So I'm going to, this one is my forecast. So three period, I'll put the result here. The first three period. A period average. So what you do, you average these three numbers. The result is a forecast for period four or for week four in this case. So week four forecast is 64. And then you use a fill handle to drag it down. Maybe just format data a little bit so that you just have two decimals. Okay, so that is a, a three weeks moving average using formula, just typing average. Now I will do the same. I will using data analysis. So I will use data data analysis, moving average, click OK. So input range, this is my input range. I didn't include labels, so I don't check out this one. Uh, output, output range, I want the output is, um, one data below original data. This is my output and click OK button. So this is from data analysis. So you get the same result as we did using the formula here, as you can see. So if I want to format this, just two decimals. See, you got identical number. Sorry, Pauline, can, uh, Professor, may you go back for a second? How did you get the forecast again? Thank you. Uh, I did this, the first method, just use average, that's it, average. The second method, go data, data analysis, select moving average, moving average, click OK button. And now select the input range, 
original data is my input range. So from B4 to B20. As you can see, I just selected data. I didn't click the label. You could click label. If you select label B3, you have to check out this box. Okay. Um, so then you specify where do you put output? I specify in D5. D5 is here. Okay. That's it. You click OK button. I get this one. And then you maybe just organize data a little bit, delete those two. Maybe delete last one. Just keep it for two decimals. On my Excel, I can't find them um, data analysis. Like if I go to data. Uh, I don't, okay, like, thank you for bringing that up. Are you using Windows or are you using app, uh, Mac? Mac. Okay, Mac, you go on the top, uh, you go on the top, there is a tools. Somewhere there are tools, then insert, add ins, something like that. It's, it's in your files and then you have options and you have to add the data option. Thank you. That is for Windows. If you are a Windows user, but this student is using Mac, Windows users, you go to file, uh, you go to options, you go to add ins, add ins. This is for Windows. But when you use Mac, I don't have Mac. Uh, I, I used to have a mark, it was broken. Um, what you can do, mark user, you just Google. You will, okay, uh, add data analysis to Excel for mark. Okay, how to, for mark, this is unmark. You go to tools, go to tools, Okay, then you click add ins, and then you check out analysis tool pack. This is the step for Mac users. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Any other questions? All right. So we get this uh, data. And next, we try to create a chart showing both the original data and the forecast number. Okay, so what you do, you select this data and then go to insert under the chart. You select learning chart, click OK button and you get this chart. So the blue represent original data, blue. The orange one represent uh, forecast data. As you can see, the forecast is more smoother than the original data. Okay. Any questions? All right. So this is a moving average, moving average. Uh, I showed you this, okay. Um, next, uh, we are going to use error matrix to compare moving average forecast. Remember when we do moving average, we can do uh, two period, three period, four period, five period, et cetera. So in this example, we will compute two period moving average, three period moving average, four period moving average to see which one will produce the best um, forecasting method. By best, we mean we need to calculate the MAD, MSE, MAPE. Okay, so now we use the same data. We use the same data, okay. Uh, yeah, the same data, so. Go to Excel. Um, not this one. It is a chapter four. Chapter four. Okay. 
All right. So now I'm going to use the same data, but I want to produce, uh, we're moving average is two period, three period, four period. Okay. So I'm going to just maybe organize the data. Where's my Excel? Chapter four. Okay, it is here. Uh, so that it will look like this one here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete everything. Okay, just keep the... Uh, uh -huh. So what I want to do for each... Um, so first I'm going to do when k equal to two. When k equal to two, I want to do two period moving average. So I will put the result here. Okay, I put the result here. And this is my forecast. So the result is here, you do average. two period moving average, okay? And then you copy down or drag data down, okay? So that is a two period moving average, k equal to two. So after you did average, now you want to calculate um, what is MAD, um, what is here, MAD, MSE, MIPE, it is a good review of chapter three, okay? So to calculate MAD, you need to do absolute deviation, okay? You need to do absolute deviation. Absolute means in Excel, ABS, means you put two vertical bar when you do man manually calculation. So ABS, why? minus y hat. So the difference between observed value and the predicted value, that is um, then ABS. And then copy down. Okay. After that, how do you calculate MAD? MAD is just the average of all these ABS. A V E R A G E, average of all this number, the result is M A D. You need to know this, okay? Because midterm will have this kind of calculations. So I get thirteen point six three. That is M A D. Next, you will calculate what is M S E. To do MSE, you need to do uh, squared error. You need to do um, E, I, then square. Remember what is E, I? E, I is observed value minus predicted value, and then square it. That is E I square. Observed minus predicted square it. And then drag it down. After that, do the, oh, one more down. After that, do the average of what the number you just get. The result is M S E. So you call A V E R A G E. Average of these numbers. Okay, you got 254. Okay. So after MSE, we do MIPE. MIPE. Hi, Professor. Yes. How do we get the forecast in this one again, please? How do we get the forecast? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You quick cell E6 and the typing formula average B4 column. B5, 
to two period moving average. That is forecast. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And how would you do um, the ABS denominator again, please? Uh, ABS deviation. Yeah. ABS deviation. I will delete it, start all over again. How do you do ABS? You do ABS opening bracket 60 minus 66 closing bracket. That's it. That is the formula. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. And then you drag it down. And then average. Okay. All right, so next we'll com compute MAPE. To calculate MAPE, you need absolute percentage uh, error, okay? Um, so you need to do, maybe I need to write down from, you need to do, uh, I'm explaining this one here. You need to use Y minus Y hat, divided by y, absolute means take absolute value. Okay, you need to do this calculation. Okay, so let me double check the formula. Divided by, M A P E. yeah, correct. Okay, so this is the correct formula. Um, the formula said after you do this, you have to add them all and then divide it by sample size. Add sigma means add them all divided by sample size. Okay, so this is this formula. When you use Excel, you just need to calculate this part and then do average. The result is a MAPE. Now I'm going to do MAPE. So I'll do ABS, get okay, the little word called ABS, bracket Y minus Y hat divided by Y closing bracket. Okay, so that is the formula. Press enter. After that, drag it down. Last step, do the average, A-V-E-R-A-G-E. -E. Average of all these numbers. So you get 0 0.23. And this 0 0.23 is the same as 23%. Okay, if you change this number to percentage, you can get result is percent, okay? And if you want to increase decimals, okay? So that is MAPE. Any questions? Okay, if you still have questions, I will repeat myself, but this time I am going to do K equal to three, okay? So I'm going to, uh, so, all this result is a two period moving average. So when k equal to three, I'm going to do it here, k equal to three, okay. I will also want to do those. So I just copy and paste. Okay. Okay, so three period moving average, the result should be put here. We want to do the three, period moving average. So equal A V E R A G C the original three numbers do the average. Okay, that's it. And then copy down. So that is the forecast. Next, I will do ABS deviation. Okay, the error term the absolute value of ABS of error. So ABS 
opening bracket, a rational value is 56 minus predicted value 62. Copy down. Then how do you do the MAD not? You do the average. A V E R A G E average of this number. You get this number. Okay, eleven. Not um, looks like I did it. Um let me double check. Looks like mine. 64. Um, I will double check uh, here. Uh, average B4 to B7. So no, average to B4 to B6. I selected the wrong data range, sorry. The mistake I made was that instead of a three period moving average, I did it four because you see that B4 to B7, that is four, okay? So uh, I'm going to just delete this one, redo it. I want to do three period moving average, average. Three, just three numbers. The mistake I made, I did four numbers, just three numbers. Okay, then drag it down. Okay, uh, and then decimal, two decimal is enough. And then this time I am correct. MAD equal to 14.85. See? MAD 14, 14.85 here. Okay. So once I did this MAD, you then do the EI square. So equal original number minus predicted number square it. Add bracket and then square. And then do the average. The result is your MSE. Okay, so I did this MSE, MSE. Next, I will do MAPE. Next, I will do MAPE. How do I do MAPE? Uh, remember, you need to do ABS, absolute value of two bracket, ABS two bracket, 56. Minus predicted value is 64 over original number 56, closing bracket. Okay. And then drag it down. After that, do the average. So 25% or you can change this to percentage. Okay. So questions about four period moving average, four period or three period moving average. Okay, lastly, I will do four period moving average. Sorry, professor. Yes, please. Could you just show the equation one more time for the ABS, the last one, the MAPE? MAPE, uh, if you don't mind, wait for a few seconds because I will have a chance to do MAPE here. 
from K okay. equal to four. Thanks. Okay, I will try to go slow when I do MAPE, okay? Okay, so I'm going to repeat myself for moving period average. So the result, I will, so this is one, two, three, four. The result I will put in row 10, okay, here. I'm starting from here. And I write. But why? No. So, oh, no, no, no. So the original data is here. So for moving average, the result should put here. This is my result. Okay. So equal average. Do the four number average. Okay. And then drag it down. Now do the ABS deviation, absolute deviation. So equal ABS, original number is this number, 70 minus predicted number is here, 62. Okay, and then drag it down. Okay, and then do MAD. So MAD is just the average, average of all of this number. Okay, so I did MAD, uh, just double check with my answer. MAD, correct, 16.13. So next I will do EI square. So I will do Original number is, let me see, 70, yes. Minus predicted number 62, square it. Yeah. Then copy down and then do MSE. MSE, it is just the average of all this number. Yeah. So now I will go slow to try to show you formula for MAPE, okay? So for MAPE, you do ABS, two opening bracket, two opening bracket, Y2, because I have something on top divided by something on the bottom here, okay? So original number 70 minus predicted number 62. This is y minus y hat divided by y. y is a bh closing bracket. So that is the formula. I pause for a moment. Okay, that is the formula I write down here without submission. It's just y minus y hat over y take absolute value. And now drag it down and then compute MAPE. So MAPE is just average of the number you just get. Average. So translate this number into percentage. Okay, double check. Yeah, my number is correct. All right. So based on two moving average, three period moving average, and four, which one would you choose? Two or three or four? And why? You should look at those three numbers, MAD, MSE, MAP, which one, which three methods produce the best result, means the smaller of those numbers. This is 23, two, da, 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 da. this one is 16. Which one, can I get some opinion? Do you use two moving average or three peer moving average or four? 
Matthew, thank you. Using two moving average because you will get those numbers. Okay, are better than three moving average, are better than four period moving average. So two moving average is good for this data, for this data. Okay. Any questions? All right. So this is a uh, moving average forecast. And next, we are going to use exponential smoothing to do the forecast. And this data use the same data set, okay, computer cells, but we are going to use uh, exponential smoothing. Remember uh, the formula for exponential smoothing I write down here. Uh, I also write down the formula number so that you can refer back to the textbook. This one is 4.13. The formula is 4.13 in the textbook. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do uh, when alpha equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 until 0 0.9. And then for each alpha, those are alpha. For each alpha, I will calculate MAD, MSE, MAPE. And then based on this result, I will select the best alpha. Looks like alpha 0 0.6 is the best alpha because of those three numbers. Combine, okay. So now I'm going to use Excel to implement this solution. The data is uh, still the same data. Okay, still the same data. Uh, and then I will maybe um, recopy this to a new worksheet, Control C. And I will call this uh, exponential smoothing. Okay. Exponential smoothing. And then um, let me see smoothing constant. Da, da, da. Okay. Let's use 0 0.1 and then 0 0.2, 0 point, um, Try to use smoothing factor 0 0.1. That is alpha, 0 0.1. Okay. So when it is 0 0.1, this method said, this is the formula. I want to explain formula first. The first forecast number is the first original number. The second forecast number is also the first original number. That is the initial initialization. Okay. So this is my forecast. Okay. This is my forecast. The first forecast is y1. 88 is Y1. The second forecast is also Y1. Y1. Now, starting the third one, I will use formula 4.13. So the formula said it is equal to this time, uh, I'll try to use cell reference. The reason is, Remember, I need to do 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 until 0 0.9. I do not want to repeat myself nine times. I just want to do one time, then I copy formula, copy down and copy right, so that I produce nine different alpha. 
Because of this reason, I do not type in 0 0.1 as alpha. I will use this cell reference because it will allow me to copy down the formula, copy down and copy right. Okay, so this C3 is my alpha. And also I need to add some dollar sign. I will explain later, okay? So this is Professor, my alpha, yes. Uh, I have a quick question. Um, does it make a difference if you if you use the formula or if you use the exponential smoothing um, data analysis tool? Thank you so much. It does not make any difference. You will produce exactly the same result when you use data analysis tool. But when you use data analysis tool, when you are asked for dampening factor, that is use one minus alpha. Yes, okay, thank you. You're welcome. You will produce exactly the same result. Okay. Um, all right. So this is a go back to now I'm using formula 4.13. So alpha times alpha times yt. Now I'm doing t plus one. So y means this number here, this is yt, not 60, it is 44. Why? Because the formula said, when you do t plus one forecast, you use the actual value for t. Okay, so this is alpha times yt and plus one minus alpha, one minus alpha times y t hat times, this is y t hat. Okay, uh, looks like I need to double check my formula. This is B13 is not correct. I will redo. So alpha times y hat, y hat is B5, that is y hat. Oops, see? My mouse is not working very well. This is a uh, times B5. B5 is yt plus one minus alpha. One alpha is C3, one minus alpha times yt hat, yt hat oh, times yt hat. I'll double check the formula. So B5 and then C5, correct. So this is the forecast for 60 for period three. And now I need to modify this formula so that it will allow me to not only copy down, but also copy to the right. Why I need to copy right? because I want to produce alpha 0 0.2, 0 0.3, until 0 0.9, okay? Uh, so first I'm going to produce different alpha here. So this is 0 0.1, the next alpha would be 0 0.2. So I am going to have nine different alpha until 0 0.9, okay? So those are my alpha. And now I'm going to modify this formula. So instead of C3, uh, when I copy to the right, so when I copy to the right, I will produce different alpha, okay? So what we are not change is row three, we are not change. So I'm going to put dollar three. Okay, so row three will not change because I want to uh, copy to the right. Okay, and here it is dollar three. When you add a dollar beside something means it is not a change, it is a fixed. Uh, I will think about this formula again. So when I copy, no. C will change to D, da, da. okay. All right, so I'm, pre I'm ready to do the forecast now. So I will produce 
the forecast when alpha equal to 0 0.2. So watch, put my mouse on the bottom right corner, click and drag to the right. Uh, looks not right. So I need to change my formula because this result is not right. Uh, let me see, the formula should be um, dollar three. Okay, I know the reason. I not need not only need to modify the formula for the C for the alpha, but I also need to modify the value for B5. So B5, when I copy to the right, I want B5 will not be changed. So this five. Uh, column B will not change. Okay, column B will not change. So, column B will not change because each time I use original data, original data is in column B. Original data is in column B. This time it should be fine. I pause for a moment. I want you to understand this formula. Why I need add a dollar sign before some number, before some letter. For example, before three, I add a dollar sign because I want row three not to change. Row three produce different alpha. They're all in row three. And then I put a dollar sign before B because column B will not change. Column B is original data. I don't want original data change when I copy down formula, copyright formula. Okay, that is the reason. Um, so this time I should be okay. Now copy to right. Wow. So this is a correct one. You get. Um, the forecast when alpha equal to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.9, okay? And then you copy down, you get all the numbers. Okay, uh, if you want to just two decimals. It is here. So if you compare my answer, uh, 0 0.3, Um, just randomly check some numbers to make sure it's right. 79, 75, and then 0 0.3, 74, 70. Yeah, correct. Everything is correct. Any questions? Any questions? All right, so once you have the forecast value, once you can forecast value, can you calculate MAD, MSE, MAPE? Of course. Okay. Um, yes, we are going to take a break in one minute. Thank you for your suggestion, okay. So any questions? So those are the forecast value for different alpha. Once you get the forecast value for different alpha, you can use the same method I did here to calculate MAD, MSE, MAPE, and the result is here, okay? And based on this result, we conclude when alpha equal to 0 0.6, we'll produce the best forecasting model, okay? Any questions? All right, shall we take a second break? Uh, come back, break now. Come back at 8.35. 10 minutes break, okay. I'm going to stop recording. When I come back, I will start recording again. <laughs> 